we resume our respective activities. I watch Yuri's knife cut through the ribbon like it's nothing but air. Meanwhile, I continue to make progress on the kanji. After we have finished attaching the paper to the ribbons, we lay them all out side by side. It looks better than I expected, and will be very effective as a door curtain. It looks great! Good thinking coming up with this, Yuri. Ah, uh, thanks. It's just something I saw online, really. Are you ready to move on to the next task? Yeah, let's do it. What do you have in mind? I'd like to create a banner. That's why I asked you to buy the paint tablets. Ah, oh, that's right. One of the items Yuri asked me to buy was a kit of watercolor paint tablets. We'll need about six cups of water to put each of the tablets in. Do you mind fetching those for us? Of course not. Six cups of water. I'll be back in a minute. Thank you very much. Oh, and just a little bit of water is okay. If you fill the cups too much, it will be too diluted. Taking Yuri's advice, I decide to use small plastic bathroom cups rather than full-size glasses. I put them on a plate to catch any paint that drips, then bring it back into my room. Yuri? Yes? I come in to see Yuri quickly roll unrolling her sleeve, pulling it back over her arm. And why is she smiling? Like I said, we'll get into that. Uh, nothing. Your face is a little red. Is it too hot in here or something? Or anything? Uh, no, not at all. Okay, that's more the expression I would give her. There's nothing wrong, so... Let's mix the paint. Yuri hurriedly dismisses me and takes it upon herself to unwrap the tablets, dropping them into the cups. So, I thought we could do something simple that would look very nice. I'd like to paint a gradient across the banner. Starting with the colors for a sunrise, then daytime, then sunset, and nighttime. Once it dries, we'll write an inspirational qu quote across the banner. Magic is everything! No. We can hang it on the wall behind the podium at the front of the classroom. Ah, neat. What are you going to write? Well... It'll be more fun to surprise you. Harry smiles at me. If you say so. After rolling out the banner, Yuri and I kneel on opposite sides so we don't get in the way of each other. Yuri uses a brush and adds a few knots of different colors across the banner to serve as a color guide when we paint. This kind of reminds me of elementary school. Painting on a banner with watercolors feels a lot like the art class projects we had back then. It's relaxing. Uh, I'm sorry if this feels too childish. No, I didn't mean that at all. It's kind of fun, you know? Yeah, it is fun. I'm glad you feel that way too. Yuri stops painting for a moment, thinking to herself. For me, I don't need to go out and do crazy things to have fun. In fact, I usually don't even want to. Hmm. Are you kind of a shut-in like I am? I just like... When, uh, I just like when I can spend time with one other person. Even if it's something simple, like reading, it doesn't even matter if we don't talk much. Just having a friend next to me makes things feel a little bit nicer. I think that's all it takes for me to be happy. Is that so? Even if Yuri and I are quite different, I can understand where she's coming from. 
I feel that way about things like anime and games. Or simply sharing the experience with someone can make me happy. Yeah, because it's like you're sharing your passion with someone else. And it's an added, it's an added satisfaction when you get to see them, kind of, enjoying it with you. I think I feel the same way. Yuri smiles gently. I knew you'd understand. Yuri leans over the banner and grabs an unused paintbrush. But I move at the same time, causing my head to bump into hers. Ah! Sorry. Yuri reels back and I quickly lift my hands in surprise. Are you hurt? No, I'm not hurt. It just startled me, that's all. Sorry, I should have asked you to get it for me. It's not your fault. It's mine. I was just too overeager. Ah, your face. There are droplets of paint on Yuri's face and neck. Is there something on my face? Yeah, I accidentally got paint on you. Sorry, it's totally my fault. I'll get a towel right away. I rush out and fetch a small towel, then I dampen it with hot water. I return to my room and kneel down in front of her. Here. <laughs> Just look at that. I pat down Yuri's face and neck with the towel. Ah, uh, is something wrong? It's hot. I just didn't expect it. Sorry. I didn't want to use cold water. Having finished, I start to retract my hand. Yuri suddenly holds my wrist. Wait. I didn't say you could stop. <laughs> Okay, no. Wait. Huh. Just for a little longer. It feels really nice. Uh. I keep my hand still against Yuri's neck. She looks into my eyes. It's an intense expression that I recognize from her when she reads her books. It almost feels... Uh, it's almost as if she's lost in a daze, enveloped by her own thoughts. She breathes gently, half through slightly parted lips. What is happening? I'm telling you it's the jasmine oil. <laughs> is the aroma of the jasmine oil giving me this dizzy feeling? Oh, it's giving you something. Yuri's gentle fingers wrapped around my wrist send a tingling sensation through my arm. And suddenly, her face seems to be much closer to mine than it was just a moment ago. Ah. Uh, Yuri slowly pulls away. Sorry. I've been feeling a little lightheaded today. I didn't mean to space out. It, it's fine. Okay, and moment's over. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> the moment is over as soon as it began. Yuri picks up her brush again. But her movements seem a little clumsier, like she's unable to focus. I remain silent, forced to ignore the fact... ignore the event that just transpired. Which one? The hot water towel, or licking her finger? I hesitantly retrieve my own brush and continue following Yuri's example. That should do it. That ought to do it. I finish filling the night sky with white dots that look like stars. Looking at the banner as a whole, I'd say it's... I'd say it's, it's very pretty and natural looking. I think it came out better than I expected. I'm really happy with the results. Yeah, me too. Are you going to have the lettering now? Uh, not yet. I mean, she did say it was going to be a surprise. It needs to dry first. That too. That's true. But won't it take a while? Well... 
Perhaps it would <laughs> perhaps it would be best to leave it here then then have you bring it in bring it in the morning. I can do the lettering in the classroom before our event starts. Is that okay? That's totally fine. Wonderful. In that case, I don't think there's anything more for us to do here. No, don't leave me. Phew. <laughs> you say that like we're glad it's over. No. I just don't want you to leave forever and never come back. Okay, no. It's not gonna happen in this route. Was I wrong to assume that you were at least enjoying yourself a little bit? Ah, no, it's not that. I'm just glad that we managed to get everything done. I see. I am too. I was a little concerned about the time. I need to start making dinner soon. Uh... So you don't have any time left. I was secretly hoping we would have extra time after finishing the work. Well... Yuri thinks to herself. I think it would be too irresponsible of me to wait much longer. I'm sorry. I was hoping there would be more time as well. It's probably my fault. For all the wacky shenanigans you caused, you mean? <laughs> Sorry for being such a slow worker. Or, yeah, that's what you call it. No, it's not your fault at all. And the important thing is we got everything done, right? Yeah. So... I shouldn't be disappointed, or anything. Gathering all her things. Yuri seems to look a little downcast. Yeah, it's like she wanted more time too, so... <laughs> I understand why. It sounded like she rarely gets the opportunity to spend time with friends in a relaxed environment. Yeah, that's definitely true. If you don't, especially if you don't get out much. And especially if you don't have, like, too many friends or whatever. But that doesn't mean this is the last time it can happen. Yeah, if you marry her, it'll happen every time. Okay, I really should stop. Yeah, I'm sorry. You can tell I totally ship him and her together. <laughs> Once Yuri packs up, I walk her out to the front door. Well, it's either her or Sayori that I ship him with the most. Inten not intentionally, but... What am I even talking about? Thank you very much for having me today. No problem at all. I'm glad I was able to help. Just let me know if there's anything else you need me to bring tomorrow. I will. Well then, Yuri fidgets. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Wait. I kind of say that without thinking. Wait, don't walk out of my life. Before you walked into my life, my life was nothing but a whisper. And now, I can't imagine living without you. Okay, <laughs> just some bad poetry for me. <laughs> About today. It's fine that we didn't have as much time as we wanted. Because we can do this again. Whenever you want, you can come over or... We can go out somewhere, we can go get pizza... Uh, I forgot you don't like going out much. As I stumble over my words, Yuri Simple s <laughs> Yuri Simple. <laughs> Yuri simply smiles bashfully. But anyway... You know what I'm trying to say, so... You're very thoughtful, Daniel. Yuri takes a s- <laughs> Yuri takes a step closer to me then briefly squeezes my hand. <laughs> Dang it, Doki Doki Literature Club, now I'm scared of close-ups. I kind of like that about you. Oh boy. Oh, well, how am I supposed to respond to that? You take her into her, your arms and passionately kiss her and 
ignore the rest of the world around you. Or at least that's how it goes in a lot of romance movies. <laughs> but I don't even get a chance to, as Yuri suddenly pulls back. Uh, Monica! Ah? Huh? Okay, so Monica's here to ruin the day again. Ah. Uh, don't let me get in the way. <laughs> Monica, why do you do this? Oh, that's right. Monica, you tease. Oh, no, she's not a... I don't know, would you call her a tease? I wouldn't, really. Sayuri said she was just helping online. I changed my mind and decided to come over. Uh, anyways, just now, we weren't... We weren't doing anything, I swear. Don't tell her dad. Okay, no. We don't even know anything about Yuri's parents, now that I think about it. Or anyone's parents, for that matter. Except Natsuki's dad. Oh, I know. I can read your minds. <laughs> Don't worry. Your secret is safe with me. I won't say a word. I was just on my way to Sayori's. Our work for the festival won't get itself done. Especially if I'm not online. Um. <clears throat> um. Well, it's nice to see you. I'm sorry, but I'm already on my way to leave. Oh, really? That's too bad. It's been a while since since it's just been us girls. <laughs> okay. Some girl talk? Like, don't involve me in this. Well, I'm a guy and I don't know anything about that. I'm sorry. But we'll all be together at the festival tomorrow, so... It's fine. That's fine, right? Of course, of course. Then why do you look sad? Uh, yeah, so... I'll see you tomorrow! And with that, she just zooms off the screen. Clearly embarrassed, Yuri hurries off. Monica waves goodbye after her. Not Sayori, hmm? I... She's already told you what she's going through, right? Oh. Okay, I know I already s got this, but I feel like reading it. I try to open my mouth, but nothing comes out. I was about to ask how she knew, but it's likely that Sayori's told Monica about things. No, she just knows how to how the universe works. They seem like close friends, after all. I... Don't worry about it. What? If you're going to go after someone or something, don't do it half-heartedly. So don't worry. I'll take care of things so you can focus on what's ahead of you. <laughs> Monica gives me an enigmatic laugh. Even if you try to save everyone, you can only do it one at a time, huh? Yeah, this is going to be girl number two. I guess even you have your limits. Yeah, I can't be at five places at once. Or maybe that's how you wanted things. No, it's not. Like I said, I love all of you. Except, like I said, I'm still not sure how to feel about you. It's like, I hate you, but I love you. I can't stop thinking of you. But it hardly matters. I'll handle what you can't. It's not like I have much to do, anyways. Oh, don't say that. Well, then again... <laughs> yeah. Monica. Hmm? Um... Will you marry me? Okay. <laughs> oh, that would be terrible. It's like, I'd be no better than Brock or Master Roshi. Well... Maybe Brock. I don't really know how to say... I don't really know what to say, but thanks. <laughs> Alright. 
See you tomorrow at the festival, Daniel. With that, Monica gives a wave as she goes towards Sayori's house. Finally, the day of the festival has arrived. I take a moment to let it all sink in on the way to school. I was finally involved in something. A real school festival. Maybe I can finally do some... Hey, Daniel! The moment is shattered. I see Sayori practically bouncing off the pavement with a huge spring in her step. Her smile could have lit up half the street and maybe powered at least half the town. It was relieving to see that Sayori was indeed doing alright. Yeah, especially if you know the original game. Come on, Daniel, where's your enthusiasm? Today's the big day! Her happiness is infectious. I can't help but crack a smile. Hey, I'm plenty excited. I just don't jump as much as you do. Sayori oply sticks. Er, Sayori simply opts to stick her tongue out in response. Eh. <laughs> she bounces off towards the school, clearly not letting me slow her down. I found myself smiling, still, despite technically being left behind. It's always nice to see Sayori in such a bubbly mood, because that's how she should always be. As I trek to school, my mind resumes its wandering. I think back to when I joined the club, which feels much longer ago than it actually was. You know, it's probably been like a week, maybe? I think about all my fellow club members. Sayori, Natsuki, Monica. My mind lingers on Yuri. The time we spent together, or the time we spent reading together, the moments we shared, we even worked together for this festival over the weekend. It hits me just how much I had enjoyed spending time with her. She was so quiet, and yet, when she gets passionate about something, it was endearing. Plus, she's cute. <laughs> <laughs> You're cute. Okay, no. Don't worry, I won't do that again. I... <laughs> well, <laughs> technically that would be perfect. I chuckle with a goofy grin on my face, feeling a bit silly at my own musings. <laughs> you purdy. Yeah. Well, you can't see me doing the face, but... As I near the school, my head swims with the possibilities of the day and the festival ahead. The school is already abuzz with, the, with activity when I arrive. Other students are scrambling around, frantically trying to set up the, s the ugh, set up the stands of their respective clubs. Meanwhile, I'm frantically trying to speak fast. Thankfully, it looked like we had the room to ourselves for the literature club. All the better for showing off the decorations Yuri and I had poured all that hard work into. As soon as I enter the classroom. I am greeted by Sayori bounding up to me. Her expression contains a curious mix of bubbly excitement and mock annoyance in the way that I imagine only Sayori could conjure. She almost immediately lays it lays into me. Whoa. <laughs> Come on, Daniel, you're the last one here. We've all been waiting for you for ages. It's been over three thousand years. Looking past her, it seems I was indeed the last to arrive. You must be a slow walker, then. <laughs> Natsuki glares at me, no doubt judging me. <laughs> Monica wears her usual smile and gives a little wave. Yuri fidgets with some small decorations, avoiding my gaze. A brief flicker of fear fills me with theories on why she wouldn't possibly want to look at me. But I swiftly assure myself that I was just overthinking something stupid. Yeah, it's not like she hates me or anything. <laughs> okay, no. I can already tell you she doesn't. She's just nervous. I return my attention to Sayori. What, you couldn't start the work without me? Uh... 
I raise an eyebrow. Honestly, we all got here not too long ago. We just thought it'd be funny to tease you a little bit about being the last one to show up. <laughs> I see your game. Where's your festival spirit, Daniel? I left it outside the door. Okay, no. <laughs> come on! Come help us! She dashes back across the classroom so fast she can't hear my retaliatory grumbling. Well, someone had to be the last to show up anyway, right? I shrug and make my way to where the rest of the girls were standing. We were all gathered around a group of desks pushed together to hold everything we had brought for the festival. Natsuki had baked an impressive amount of cupcakes, and their bright design was certainly tantalizing. She catches me surveying the sweets, and shoots me a look that says, I'll bite your hand off if you bite into one of those. Dummy. Monica begins the proceedings with a cheerful smile. Okay, everyone. Now that we are all here, we can go over our plans for today. Is everyone ready to show the school why the literature club is worth joining? We all or, we meet her call to action with a resounding, Yeah! Alongside race fans, even Yuri, not normally one to raise her voice, had let out a rousing cheer. I too can feel myself catching the festival fever. The excitement of this morning returning in full, for full force. Someone call a doctor, because I got me a case of festival fever, and the only cure is more cowbell. No, there isn't. There won't be any cowbell today. Here I am, a representative of the club I had grown to enjoy, surrounded by people I could call my friends. It's a nice feeling. I have no doubt that the others felt something similar given their enthusiasm. Monica claps her hands together to signal the, immediate, the imminent rundown. Now then, we have a lot to do. First things first, is everyone ready to give their poem performance later today? I go up. I had, pre I had prepared as well as I could, of course, but the thought of it is still nerve-wracking. The other girls give an affirmative nod, and I soon realize they are looking at me expectantly. Why are you all staring at me? I had gotten a bit lost in worrying about my poem. I find myself unconsciously looking to Yuri for support, making her look like a deer caught in the headlights with that expression. I notice a bit of a fluster flustered blush. But this time she holds eye contact with me. If she could overcome her quiet disposition to perform in front of people, I could get over my nerves. I turn to Monica and give a thumbs up. Absolutely. Excellent. Now then, Yuri, Daniel, I need you two to take care of your decorations. They look wonderful, and I'm sure you two will know best how to arrange them to liven up the room. Yuri and I give Monica a simultaneous nod of acknowledgement. Natsuki, you can handle the cupcake station. Sayori, you can be with me closer to the door. We'll answer any questions people have about the club as they come by. This time, Sayori and Natsuki nod. With the positive up the positions and read on, we all break off into our respective duties. Break off to our respective duties. Yuri and I gathered the, the decorations on the desk and set about filling the walls with our handiwork. I, the process reminds me of an assembly line, or Yuri's does rather. With measured, precise movements, she finds the best spot for each decoration. She's very meticulous, I guess. It was clear that she had thought of these arrangements ahead of time. Comparatively, I work at a snail's pace, unsure of what looked best where, unlike Yuri, I lack an eye for this sort of thing. Yuri seems almost in a trance while working. Gone were her normally timid movements, replaced by an impressive, 
impressive assuredness. The work is largely silent. On one hand, I want to talk to Yuri more. But on the other hand, I would hate to break her concentration. I decide to take the risk. Go for it. YOLO. Or, well, when you have this, you don't have to worry about that. Hey, Yuri. <laughs> the unexpected Yurable. Yurable? <laughs> Yurble the Yurble. <laughs> the unexpected verbal probing catches the poor girl off guard. She gives a small start. She gives a small start and dropped the decorations when she he was. She gives a small start and dropped the decorations she was pinning to the wall. Like I had broken her out of a hypnosis. I feel bad intentionally, but she seems to relax when she realizes it was just a friendly question and turns to me. Oh, sorry, Daniel. I was just so caught up in work. I, um. She pauses a bit to pick up the decoration she dropped. What is it, Daniel? I was just wondering how you felt about your poem performance today. Well, I practiced it a whole lot this weekend. I just hope everyone likes the poem I selected. It might be kind of weird, even outlandish. I'm sure it'll be great. Anyone who can't see the beauty and quality of your poems, and you, isn't worth worrying about. Forget them. Like, just have confidence in yourself and just stay true to who you are. I give a genuine smile to assure her further. She reddens a, a little at the compliment, but returns the smile sheepishly. Sheepishly. I decide at this moment that this sight alone made it worth taking the risk. Well, you're lucky to be able to see it. It's like, unfortunately, I mean, of course, Satchley's work, I mean, she did a great job, although, yeah. It's like, if you're making the mods and whatever, you're kind of limited to what you got. Or, if you can make your own sprites for them. Thank you, Daniel. Really, that means a lot to me. Is, um, is your poem preparation going well? The worry creeps back into a lump in my throat. I sure hope so. I practice a lot. And I think, and I like to think I did all I could to prepare, but the doubt never really goes away with this sort of thing, does it? <laughs> I suppose not. I'm sure you'll do, you'll also do well. You've made a lot of progress since joining the club. Her warm smile is imminently assuring. We'll both just have to put our best foot forward. Absolutely. You already said that. <laughs> we both nod and resume decorating, invigorated after the impromptu pep talk. The conversation ultimately wasn't much, but it had me glowing for a good while. Eventually the room was properly decorated. I like to think I helped a little, but Yuri ended up doing most of it. Yeah, well, I mean, he did say he was working at a snail's pace. I merely held up the larger things in place for her as she attached them to the wall, held a handful of them so she didn't have to go back and forth, and that sort of thing. Regardless, the room looks much livelier with everything pinned up. I feel a sense of, a sense of pride as I survey the room, noticing how the decorations that Yuri and I had made really pull the room together. Satisfied with our work, we opt to help the other club members with their stations as the students begin to roll in from the festival. The day rolled by, a surprising number of students stopped by, curious about the literature club, or at least about Natsuki's charming cupcakes. anyone stopping by just for the pastries. They were amazing. So what, did Natsuki let you try one after all? She didn't bite your hand off? 
Eventually, Monica steps up to the front of the room to call everyone to attention. Hello, everyone. We hope you are enjoying everything the Literature Club has to offer at this festival. We will now have our special event, a poetry recital from our very own club members. Isn't that exciting? Isn't that lovely? I doubt that many of the meandering students were terribly interested in poetry, but they are taken in by Monica's charisma and enthusiastically clap regardless. It's like she's just so charismatic and hypnotic. Especially those eyes. Those eyes are what get you. Great! Each of our members, including yours truly, has prepared a special poem to recite for you all. Or recite to you all. Please give them your undivided attention as they perform. Sayori, if you could start us off, please. It occurs to me that I never... I was never told the order that we would be presenting our poems. I just hope I won't have to go directly after a stunning poem until I realized that all of them were likely to be better than mine. Oh well. Yeah, I don't think they're going to keep their standards low. <laughs> Thus, the girls performed their poems to the crowd that had gathered in the literature club room. Sayori's is charming and lighthearted, leaving the audience in adoration. Natsuki's is deceptively simple, but still well received. And Monica draws in the audience with her performance. She's definitely stolen the show so far. Which is unfortunate for me, as I am the next up. That was going to be a tough act to follow. Uh, hi. My name's Daniel. I take my place at the front. The other club members seated before me among the other students who had stayed thus far. And... I perform my poem. A couple of stumbles here and there, but I think it was solid overall. For my level, anyway. I get a modest round of applause to validate my efforts, but the smiles from my friends in the literature club really solidify it. Even Natsuki? Okay. Satisfied, I take my seat as Yuri gets up to take her turn. I give her an encouraging nod as she stands to face the audience. Okay, Yuri, what do you got? Without much delay, she begins her performance. I had seen instances of it before, but it still amazes me how much Yuri changes in moments like these, where she is truly in her element. Gone were the stutters and pauses in her normal speech, replaced by a flowing elegance. Her poem is starkly different from the ones previous, being much more somber and enigmatic. I sit enraptured by the contrast in Yuri's spellbinding execution. Yuri finishes, ugh, Yuri finishes her poem. The audience is silent first, and I could hardly blame them with how stunned I myself feel. I'm the fastest to recover as I stand up and begin clapping, the other club members soon following suit, and then the rest of the audience give her a standing ovation. <laughs> Even a standing ovation didn't cut in my opinion but it is the least we could offer. 